Hello class, we're working on uh, chapter 23, Statement of Cash Flows. So here's what we're going to do on Statement of Cash Flows. You need to know the terms. We're not going to do a big, huge Statement of Cash Flows. We're just going to break it into uh, sections. I've got several brief exercises for you. So all you have to do is, is understand the terms and then understand how to get each little section and how direct and indirect works and things like that. So you've probably seen uh, cash flow uh, before. I know we've done several problems on cash flow, so I've... I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, anyway, this should be a pretty quick video just as we're wrapping up uh, the last things on uh, intermediate accounting. Now, cash flow is, is one of our big three financial statements, uh, the cash flow statement. Income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. Now, what's the usefulness of the statement of cash flows? It helps us to as assess the ability to generate future cash flows, the ability to pay dividends and meet obligations, to show the difference between net income and net cash flows from operating activities, and then the cash and non-cash investing and financing transactions. All right, so we have three major activities um, that are cash related. And then there's there could be non-cash. If it's not one of these three, then it's non-cash. So let's just say the first one is operating activities. Operating activities are everything that's not investing or financing. That's one way to think about it. It's everything involved in net income, um, any type of normal activity. So this is the list I think is, is helpful. Anything involved in net income, if it shows up on the income statement, it's operating. Anything involving with changes of current assets like increase in accounts payable or decrease in uh, inventory. Anything that's a current liability, any gains or losses because they show up in the income statement uh, then they count but gains and losses are not extra cash and we'll have to subtract those out if we're doing the indirect method so this is the way to remember operating activities the second one is investing activities so investing activities anything involving long-term assets buying or selling now you could have a list here I think it's it's helpful to have that list but Anything that's long-term asset, like so buying long-term asset like equipment. What about selling equipment? Yes. What about buying a building or selling a building? Yes, all that um, is long-term assets. Investing, uh, investing activities is if we have um, loans is a long-term asset like a notes receivable, right? Not when we're borrowing money. And then acquiring and disposing of investments and in productive long lived assets. So, so anything involving long-term assets, um, so that would be property, plant, and equipment, investments, and um, anything like that, intangibles would be the other one. The third one is financing activities. Now, financing activities is anything involving, um, we're borrowing money, we're paying money back, we're obtaining capital um, by issuing stock or paying dividends. So. The way to think about this one is any long-term liabilities, any dividends, common stock, uh, preferred stock would be in this category too. Now, just for the operating activities method, it only matters these two direct and indirect methods. The investing and financing activities are the same always. But there could be two ways to present the operating activities. The direct method is, let me just categorize it. Hey, this is easy to read, but it's um, you know kind of hard to prepare. So this is only done maybe about 5% of the time is the direct method. I think about 95% because we have an accrual method, 95% of the statements of cash flow are the indirect method. So you need to be familiar with both. Direct method says, let's find cash receipts and cash payments. All right. So what we're going to do for our purposes for this chapter is I'm just going to let you do cash receipts, cash payments. You know, certainly being able to read a, a cash flow statement is important. I don't think you're going to have to prepare one from start to finish. Um, maybe on the CPA exam you can do that. But but in, in real life, you're not going to prepare that statement. It'll be prepared based on your accounting system. So you need to understand, you know, how this works, how to get cash receipts and cash payments. And we'll show how this, this works here in just a minute. 
And then the indirect method, you need to start with, and this is operating activities only, start with net income and make plus or minus adjustments. Now, the other way to think about this is you know you have to add depreciation expense, you have to add amortization expense, you have to add any losses and subtract out any gains. Well, losses, if you sell um, uh, land and you have a loss, well, you record the cash, that would be an investing activity, but the loss would show up in the income statement, you have to back that out because it doesn't mean you paid cash for that, it means you just receive less cash than the fair value. So you add losses and subtract out gains. Um, that's how you do that. Now, I've copied this, this final section from Chapter 3. And because I think you already know it, I don't want to go through this again. You can go back and look at that video from Chapter 3 if you want to. It's on the tab from Chapter 3. So things like um, how do we show cash collected on accounts receivable or cash received from customers. So that's the first one. The next one is find wages expense. If you have this information, how do we find wages expense? You're, you're going from um, cash to accrual, or you, you're going from accrual to cash. So here, here's cash received from customers again. Here is cash paid for salary. So if you have some information, then you have cash paid for salary. So you are, we've already done this, so I think you, you probably know um, how to do a lot of this. This one is, well, how much did we pay cash for uh, suppliers, two suppliers for inventory? Remember, you start with cost of goods sold and plus or minus the change in accounts payable, plus or minus the change in inventory. So what do we need to know for Chapter 23? Certainly, you need to know operating, investing, financing. We've got some exercises on this, but also little problems like, hey, calculate the operating activities using the direct or using the indirect, um, ca find cash received from customers, cash paid to suppliers, things like that. So everything's a small problem and um, you should be in good shape on this. I did several little uh, brief exercises in this chapter and you should be in great shape uh, on doing this. This is, we could spend a lot of time doing a huge statement and I don't know that's, that's really uh, beneficial to do a big huge statement with a worksheet approach and all that that they do like in the, the appendix. Anyway, that's how you do uh, chapter 23 cash flows. Good luck.